Hello, this is Professor Gavor. Uh, I want to cover Chapter 1 of IT Strategy Issues and Practice, Practices by uh, James McKean and Heather Smith, the textbook for uh, SBNM 5450, a course on information technology. And we're talking about developing and delivering on the IT value proposition. So what is IT value? What is the value of information technology? And you'll find me sometimes using information technology and information systems um, interchangeably. Technology is more the hardware and um, sometimes the software. I, information systems is how you use IT to run your business and make decisions. So it depends on what book you use and who you talk to and what company you work for. There is sometimes a distinction, sometimes they overlap. I tend to use them somewhat interchangeably and it's probably not correct. So IT value is the worth, value is the worth or desirability of something. Value is a subjective assessment. Some people don't value McDonald's but value a high-end steakhouse instead. But um, value, so it's a subjective thing. It's assessing the worth or desirability of something. And IT value itself is based on how a business chooses to view it. Uh, more and more businesses will view it as the last bullet says, defined by return on investment or key performance indicators because IT systems there I go, I use IT and systems in the same uh, nomenclature there, um, is based on, you, you have to invest some money and time on implementing it and making it work, and you're sold on it by the value that it's going to deliver your company based on a return on an investment, which absolutely has to do with the bottom line. And KPIs, key performance indicators of how your business will improve in performance in certain areas that are deemed important and critical to management. I used to joke all the time that when you have a, an IT implementation that, um, you know, the promise is uh, your children will do better in school you lose 50 pounds and hair will grow on your bald head, at least on my bald head. And oftentimes business leaders are disappointed that they don't get that full return on their investment. So in a summary, IT value is tied to your own business model and what you expect to get out of it for the money that you put into it. Most companies are going to have some return on investment based on a year or two and it really depends on the nature of the company and they expect to get this kind of performance increase return on investment to reduce your bottom line you're automating parts of the business so you want to be able to reduce headcount reduce headcount reduces your salary reducing your salary on the same base of sales will increase your profit so where is IT value well, decisions about IT value, you want to optimize the value of the firm. It's not the IT itself that's giving you the value, the IS that's giving you the value. It's the value it delivers by automating certain parts of your business and running it more effectively and efficiently. And therefore, you get a return on the investment in terms of top line or bottom line. Most of the time when we're talking about value, in this case, it's about profit. So uh, the value needs to be leveraged for the benefit of the firm, certainly. Who delivers this value? Well, it's a combination of people, process, and technology. Um, when you put in a new bit of technology, which is a computer system and associated software, people have to use it, and probably less people on the promise of it have to use it. And therefore... People and the technology have to work together. 
How do they work together? There has to be an associated business process that the technology is working on. So people, obviously they do their jobs. All work is considered a process. All process can be optimized. If you have a technology that allows the process to be optimized at a higher level and move things very fast where you could do the same process more, like I said, effectively and efficiently with less people, that's where your value lies. So when is this value realized? Well, it has a temporal dimension. That means there's time involved. You don't implement the software and immediately get your result because oftentimes if the software is complicated, um, it requires a lot of time to implement it. So companies spend a considerable amount of time to deploy the technology with no benefit. In fact, there's a cash drain usually if you're implementing something, especially if it's an ERP system like SAP or, Soft or, or Oracle. Some value is achieved by solving initial inefficiencies, certainly, the low-hanging fruit that you might call it. Um, as use increases, complexity grows, and sometimes costs increase. But finally, in the end, the business is made simpler and efficiencies are achieved. Getting over this fourth bullet point sometimes in the midst of a huge implementation. Now, most companies have implemented an ERP like SAP or Oracle, and they're not about to change it in midstream. So anything they do is adding functionality to it, uh, maybe doing a new version, but people already are familiar with it. Each of these subsequent implementations or many implementations are not as staggering and challenging as the first implementation. They have this W effect for delivering IT value, and this is economic value added. You could look it up on Investopedia and see what it means. So first of all, you're doing some cleanup. You're getting your house in order. And I think if we're talking about this, we're talking about something like SAP or Oracle, a very large computer system. It takes 12 to 16 months to get your house in order and probably get it implemented. Then you, or your value starts to increase, um, hopefully as you harvest the low-hanging fruit. In fact, they use the same words I did, as in the next year or so. So that takes you from one to basically two years. In the third year, uh, you're probably trying to make this thing fly, so you're making your business more complex, challenging your people more. And then after that, years three to five, you make the business simpler. So your economic value added increases dramatically. But getting your house in order usually means addressing your business processes. This, this whole part is getting your new business processes in place. I think that this is not really a W, but it's kind of, this has probably still got some increase the way I've seen it work to here. And then it takes off from there when you can really start doing exciting things like shared service organizations, which is a topic that we're going to talk about in this class. All right, so best practices in understanding this value. It has to be linked to your business model and the way you look at business. It's, you can't look at this as IT projects and IT for IT's sake, no. The IT world, the ITIS world in your company is to support the business. First rule of all business information technology information systems. The value is subjective and manage perceptions accordingly. You wanna look for win-win across the board. You wanna seek business commitment for all IT projects, which means they've got to be relevant to the business. Business folks are not going to com um, commit to and support an IT project that they see no value in. That's not making their jobs better. That's not making their lives easier and adding to the bottom line. 
So you want to manage the value over time. So I guess there's three components of this. Value proposition, you want to identify the opportunity conversion, which is probably the implementation of the software, and then realization of your ROI and key performance indicators, which will in the end finally deliver IT value. So it cannot be just led by IT. It cannot just be led by business, the business side of things. It has to be planned together. So joint IT business mechanisms have to be established to identify uh, business and technical opportunities where the IT can add value. You want to establish formal business process for project prioritization. Because even if you have SAP and Oracle, you're not done. You're always tweaking it. You're always adding functionality like quality management, warehouse management. Uh, these are all things we added after we implemented SAP at a company I worked at. And, of course, my bias is going to be in the area I worked, which is supply chain. I had the honor of being the supply chain business lead in many of these projects. And you want to establish a formal pro process for this. It's almost like a capital budget, but it's an IT budget. It's run almost parallel to the capital budget. Do we need a new building? Do we need a new warehouse? Do we need a new factory? Are we going to invest in new machinery? And what are the priorities of those projects? Well, you judge them by the ones that yield the most value to the company in the shortest amount of time. The same thing applies to IT. So best practices in identifying the potential value. You want to recognize and evaluate opportunities in the joint business IT structure the ideas could come from business, they could come from IT. Sometimes there's been a technological development that allows the IT people to bring a great idea to business people. Other times business people talk to other business people and say, why don't we do this? A uh, key point uh, for this is undergraduate uh, advising and automated um, self-advising. I knew it existed. We didn't have it at North Park. But I knew other universities had it. Why don't we have it? Why don't? And it turns out it was part of our ERP system, Enterprise Resource Planning System, for a higher ed that we have at North Park. We just never turned it on. A project was started to uh, implement it, and now we have it. And we're probably in this phase right here where we haven't reaped the full value because we don't have everybody trained in using it properly. Uh, it's been in for two years. So really, the starting this year, we should, we, hopefully we should start seeing some great results coming out of that. And reducing the burden of the advisors and having the students be more self-sufficient. So, we want to have a means of comparing value across projects and utilize a portfolio approach to project selection. That's what most companies do right now. You don't allow people to go out and buy little computer programs themselves and apps. You give them some leeway to do that. We'll talk about how that might work later. But you really want them to have this coordinated at the central level where you're spending money on IT projects, apps, new software, enhancement softwares, revisions that will give the most return on that investment to the company and have the broadest appeal across an entire company if you're a multinational. And you want to establish the funding mechanism. As I said, it, to me it's a parallel structure to the capital budget planning. So effective conversion. Conversion is a transformation of ideas into the and opportunities into IT value proposition. So you have this identification, we have a need. Now how are we going to turn that into a, a an opportunity, transform that idea into a real project? So excellent project management, effective execution, and reliable IT operations are critical to achieving this conversion and in delivering the value proposition 
of your project quicker to the company. <clears throat> you usually have more projects than you have money to do. It's like scarcity in microeconomics. You have insufficient time to complete all the projects. All projects require training because the people part of it, as we saw in the diagram before, is critical and people require training. Because you've changed the process, you've changed the technology, people are now out of their comfort zone, you've got to teach them the new way to do things. So, training is huge. Multifunctional change management. Because across various silos of the company, if you're changing the way they do business, people get scared of that. They're so used to doing things in one way, Change is scary. They're wondering about their jobs. They're wondering about, I used to be good at doing it the old way. Will I be valued and good at doing things in the new way? Emphasis on higher level learning and knowledge management. Uh, those are concepts that we'll discuss more. How does a company manage knowledge management? Um, so realizing IT value is a long-term process but it has to have some short-term results. When I said it's not, it's similar to the capital budgeting process, most companies I work for, you couldn't, def you couldn't implement, you wouldn't get approval for a capital project unless it had met certain ROI thresholds within 18 months. And it's usually got to pay for itself and start delivering that excess, that, that extra, savings and or profit within 18 months. And if it doesn't do that, most projects weren't considered. So to deliver value, technology has to be used extensively. And we know it's used more and more in every company. Uh, measurement, measurement is a key component of all this. So does expected value equal actual value? I mean, I spent time in my career early in the implementation of ERP, SAP at uh, one of the companies that I worked for. I was the process guy. The SAP was sold. The SAP implementation was sold on some expected value, which was a tremendous level of savings and efficiencies. After two years, we weren't getting it. Everybody said, was I sold a bill of goods? Why can't we get that? Well, the reason we couldn't get that is because people were still stuck in trying to do things the old way in what they call the legacy system, the system before SAP, and weren't entirely bought into the new system. And because they didn't trust the new system, it was different to a certain degree, they were thinking, well, this darn thing doesn't work because it doesn't work like it used to work or you want it to work. Well, as soon as you have that mindset in enough employees, they stop maintaining the data and doing all the right things to actually achieve that value. And it quickly becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that this darn thing indeed does not work. So we need to address that through change management and make sure that proper training is in place and the reports and screens that people use kind of sort of look like an evolution of what they used to use. So, best practices in realizing value. Well, you plan a value realization phase in all IT. I've never heard of a value realization phase, but you've got to look at what we're trying to do, and it really comes down to change management. How are we going to get there and what is it going to look like realistically? When do we expect to deliver that value proposition? You want to measure outcomes against expected results. You want to look for, and it's almost a quality improvement project, which is why I was put in charge of it, because I am the process-driven guy, being an ops guy and a quality improvement guy. And this is all about business processes and business processes only work as well as the IT is designed to work, and the people interfacing are, are able to use it properly. So there you have it. We want to assess the value realization at all levels of the organizations. 
and have a provision for acting on new opportunities to leverage value. And guess what? If you can't get value out of the old stuff that you've already done, if, you don't, if the value isn't coming through, all of a sudden your credibility is lacking when it comes to try to get new projects approved. So here's five principles for delivering value. Have a clearly defined portfolio value management process. Like I said, parallel to the capital budgeting process. Aim for chunks of value. You don't want to get it all at once. Phase it out. Do it in phases. Adopt a holistic orientation for technology value. I'm not sure what it means, but there's a slide that will help explain it better. Uh, aim for joint ownership of technology initiatives. Yes, joint ownership, almost owned and led by the business with technology playing an almost subservient role, and experiment more often. Well, and I'll explain that when we get to that slide. So have it clearly defined. You track projects as they're developed. Revisit the portfolio decisions to determine if the project or, or order or hierarchy should be changed. Once you've committed to a project, don't stop doing it. I mean, that project's no longer on the planning phase. It's actually an execution phase. So we're talking about planning. Invest in strategic and infrastructure projects, ones that will have big bang. Things that change your company infrastructure, things that, take, that, that help deliver company strategy will usually have more traction than something that makes, you know, just a few people's jobs easier. Uh, develop an ongoing means to ensure that value is realized. I think the parallel process to capital budgeting is something companies know and can implement. And then they have to use strong project management to drive it. That's the way I look at this. Aim for chunks of value. Look for key areas. Deliver value through a series of small focus projects. Or if you have this long project, make it phase. So you have some short-term projects that all build up to a long-term result. Uh, well, when they say a holistic approach, I guess they mean the people, processes, and technology. That's You, you will fail if you don't do that. The people part is probably the most critical. Uh, certainly the business process, you have to have uh, the, the best business process you can possibly have and technology that enables that best business practice. But without the people, it doesn't happen. Um, you want to anticipate the impact of technology? I don't know what that means, but make sure that people know what's coming at them and provide the proper training and incorporate technology changes into business changes. Ensure there's executive sponsorship or stakeholdership for all IT projects. If it's significant and you don't have executive sponsorship and drive to get it done, it will take longer and cost more. So you've got to have an executive uh, champion for most of these projects that drive to make it happen and push all their people to make it happen. You want to develop a, a culture, they say, of joint responsibility, mutual trust between IT and the business. If the business isn't feeling like their needs are being met, IT is viewed as a fiefdom of its own, the business people will balk at almost everything they suggest. It's got to solve business problems and practically after a while it almost has to be led by the business folks where the IT people are more advisors than telling them what to do. Experiment more often. Well sometimes you want to take the risks on a small scale. Large companies, multinationals are not known for being risky entities. You want to experiment with new technologies on a small scale. So Maybe you assign a lead entity. If you have 12 divisions, you give one of your divisions this, the, and maybe even a small area within that division the task of try this out. Let's see if there's some value and if, if it really will do what we want it to do in our company, in our company culture. So experiments, uh, uh, this enables technology investments to be made in smaller chunks. You always want to give some money 
to, to departments to do things on their own. Um, in fact, the company I was talking about, one of the things that en enabled them to make the transition to this COVID pandemic era was a mass adoption of Google Hangouts. North Park has done the same thing with Microsoft Teams. It's an enabling feature that, you know, was experimented on a small level with Google Hangouts. People liked it. It bubbled to the top. It became something important. Next thing you know, the company is working with Google to enhance Hangouts for business, in a sense, so that they can do that. And Microsoft Teams, they used to have something called Skype for Business, which was horrible and wonky and it didn't work. And now Microsoft Teams is just a spectacular little product that I think we will even use in this class. So in the conclusion, we're talking about concepts, activities uh, that are involved in, in making and developing and delivering IT value to the company. It cannot be viewed in isolation. It's got to be viewed as business projects, pure and simple. The entire IT process must be managed from conception to cash. That's the first time they're bringing it up. But in the whole implementation phase, you're burning money. So you've got to burn money to earn money. And what is your ROI on that? And how long is the time frame in which you're allowing that ROI to be realized? So that's part of the project management of this whole thing. So I thank you very much for this first chapter. And we will be back talking about more. Thank you very much.